we're back. This is part three of the Dorico tutorial series. So we've got a whole bunch of different topics that we're gonna cover and look at. And these come from a lot of different videos that I put together for somebody else uh, when they were asking me a lot of questions about getting started with Dorico 5. So hopefully this is helpful for you. Check out the timestamps below in the description and those uh, will share what each subject is in case you wanna skim through and find the answer to a specific question that you have about Dorico. Now, if you're curious about how to get Dorico set up on your system, uh, that would be a different video. So you wanna check that out somewhere else. And you know, we covered a lot of things in the first two videos. I've got more coming about these tutorial series. So be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and you can comment your questions below, and hopefully I'll get those answered for you either here or in another video. And you know, you can also become a member of the channel and support what it is we're doing here. Your support goes a long way in making sure tutorials like this are possible. So here's part three of the Dorico tutorial series. Perhaps we want to move music from up here to down here or to down here. We could select the music, hit control C and then go down here and hit control V. It is now pasted the exact same music. Another way we could do this is to select this measure and then right click and then paste special. We could duplicate to staff below and it is now duplicated it to the lower staff if we were to select that again hit right click paste special duplicate to the staff below we've brought it all the way down we could have also moved this up let's go ahead and select this measure in the bass clef we're gonna delete if we select the music here in the violin Perhaps we only want these three notes, and then we right click, paste special, duplicate to staff above, and now we've moved only those three notes up, and they are the exact same notes as they are in the violin. So perhaps we move them down the octave with control, alt, down arrow. There is a lot going on in measure seven. Perhaps we wanna select all of the dynamics. There's a couple ways we could do that. We could just select the dynamics or we could select everything here. Everything is highlighted. We'll right click and then we're going to use the filter. And now we could select all dynamics. And now we've only selected the dynamics. This is especially helpful in larger scores. So now that we've got our dynamics selected, we could delete them or we could do something else with them. This measure here would sound better if we added a third below. So we're going to select this measure and we're gonna use the popover for intervals and do shift plus I. So now any number that we place, will add that interval. Let's do a third below. We'll do minus three and it's automatically added to all of our selection, a note a third below. Perhaps for this note right here, this C, we want it to be a perfect fifth above or a G. So we're going to do shift plus I, and then we're gonna hit number five, enter, and it's added a G above the C we had selected. The music is going well, but the violinist now doesn't want to play in this key. We now need to change everything in this piece from C major to D major. So to do that, we're going to select the beginning of this piece. We could select the first measure. We could select the five, four, or we could even select a clef, but we're just going to select the measure over here on the right hand side. We have key signature right here where the two sharps are. We're gonna select this menu and we're gonna change our key signature. So we are having major selected, we could have minor, but here in major, we're going to use these arrow keys to select what key we want. So now that we have D major entered, we're going to click this button 
and it has changed all of our music to D major. When we changed our music, it added a break, but we don't want this measure to be alone. So we are going to go to engrave mode, and now we're going to select this purple signpost that says system break, and we're going to select delete. It has now moved our music up. Now here is another system break, which is keeping this measure alone. So we're going to select this signpost, and we're also going to hit delete. It has now brought all of our music to the same page. I've decided, however, that I want my name to be a little bit higher on the page. I can't select this frame, this text box, until I have the frames tool selected from the top left corner. So I'm going to select that tool. And now, if I select this frame, you can see sometimes it's going to select all overlapping frames, but we just want this frame. So we're going to zoom in. And now we're going to select the side of this frame and it gives us all of these options. If we wanted to make this bigger, we could select any of these small boxes and change the size of the text box. If we wanted to move this text box up, we would select the side of it right here and we would move it up. Click out of it and we can see it's moved it up there. Perhaps that's too far, so we could click here, select it, and we could move it down. That's just about right. Our violinist got sick and can no longer perform the show, so we need to change this violin part to viola. We're going to go ahead to Setup, and we're going to select our violin and make sure that the arrow is dropped down here. We can now see the instrument that is being played by this player. So the larger box is the player or the person, and this is the instrument they're playing. This is important because if you had a player who is a percussionist, they could have cymbals, snare drum, bass drum, a number of instruments that would be added within the player. So again, the larger this is a player, and this is the instrument. So for changing our violin to viola, we're going to click these three dots in here from this blue violin, and it gives us a number of options. We could change the name, we could delete the instrument, but we're going to change instrument. It gives us this popover, and we're going to type in viola. And we're going to double click viola. It has now changed the part for us to viola. But we see here that this note is red because it is out of range for the instrument. If we needed to change that, we'll go to write mode and we're going to select all of the music for the viola. We're going to select this measure, hold the shift button, and select the last beat of the last measure. And now we're going to use control alt down arrow to move it all down the octave and it's now within the range for our viola player let's go ahead and add some more measures to the music up here in our bars and bar lines menu we're going to add eight measures to the end of the flow now i click insert bars and we now have enough music that's going to take us into the second page here on the top of the second page, we can see that it says Movement 2 instead of Tim's Project. Now this is because in our wild cards, this is showing something different. So to take a look, let's go to Engrave Mode. And now let's go into our frames. Now if I double click into this area here where it says Tim's Project, you see that this is Project Title. If I double click into over here where it says movement two, it's saying flow title. So these are two different wild cards. We can see and access and change our wild cards. 
if we go up here to file project info and here we can see Tim's project is the project title and flow one or what uh, Dorico calls flows which is movements it's called movement two so there's a few ways we can solve this the first being we can copy info from project so anything in here will be copied to here so I'm going to select this here if we had several movements they would all be available in this drop down but we only have project so let's copy and we can see it's changed the name of the title here now we're going to hit apply and we can see up here it's changed to Tim's project the other way we could have solved this was to double click inside here and change this from flow title to project title. Either way gets us to the same result. So here on the second page, let's insert some notes using the mouse. So we're going to, in write mode, we're going to click on our quarter note. Now we can see that we can drop in using the uh, mouse here. So we could put in a C. And of course, due to how Dorico handles measures, it's automatically moved some music over for us. So we are in a 5-4 bar, so we could add a few more notes. So I'm going to use my typing keyboard to do this. So these notes are a little high, and I'm going to bring them down the octave. I'm going to select them, and then holding Control, Alt, and the down arrow, I'm going to move them down the octave. Let's double click into this measure. Now I can still see the note to drop things, but perhaps I decide that I want to move some notes around here. If I wanted to do that, I could either escape from here, or I could go over on the left and grab my select tool. Now with the select tool, I no longer have that note appearing where I can hit the note and add it into the measure with the mouse. So I'll go ahead and select this note here, this A, and I'm going to add an accent using this menu on the left. So now I'm going to go back into measure 11 and I'm going to double click and add some more notes. And now you can see I don't have the input from the mouse tool. I could add notes from my typing keyboard. I could hit E, D, C, but if I wanted to put in a note with my mouse, what I have to do is go over here to the left and turn off my selection tool. And now I have that overlapping note again so I could place an F and then it's still there until I click the select and then it's gone. So if you need that mouse, make sure the select tool is off. We're going to add some dotted rhythms. First, let's change our time signature. So here in measure 12, I'm going to select the measure and I'm going to do shift M and now I can change the meter. So we're going to go to 4 slash 4. So up here, let's put in some notes. I'm going to select enter, and now we're going to put in a dotted rhythm. So I'm going to put an E, a C, and now I want a dotted rhythm. To add a dotted rhythm, I could go over here to the right, and I could add here, on this left tool, the dotted button, and then I could add my note. I'll hit a B, and you can see it's done a tie. And now I'll close this with an eighth note. I'm going to select an eighth note up here, and then I'm going to type in A. And now it has changed this to be a dotted note. Dorico tries to understand 
where in the measure the dot is happening and whether it should be a tied note or a dotted note. And it's using its own rules for this. So again, here at the beginning of measure 13, I'm going to add in a dotted quarter note. And another way to add in a dot is I'm going to hit the period button and you can see that this is highlighted blue to say that the dotted function is on. So I'm going to type in F and you can see it's showing it as an eighth or a, a quarter note tied to an eighth note. I'm going to hit F again and now it's turned that to a dot. I'm going to turn off the dot and now I'm going to hit G with a quarter note. And now we can see that these two notes are the same length. They are three eighth notes each, but due to Dorico's rules in engraving, the first is shown as a dotted quarter and the second is shown as an eighth tied to a quarter note. And this goes into certain music theory and engraving rules about making sure to split notes to show the strong beats. Here in our music, we have a 5-4 bar. Let's add some music. I'm going to double click in, and I'm going to add a half note. And we're going to type in A, and now we want a second half note. We're going to hit A, and now a quarter note. We're going to hit B. Now as you can see, it's turned the music into a half note with while this does carry two beats, it's tied because Dorico believes that it should be splitting here to have three plus two. So perhaps we don't want it to split in a three plus two function. There's a way around this. What we could do, and we're gonna add it in this area, we're gonna double click in and we're gonna select the half note and we're gonna type in an A, and here's our A. So in order to make sure that we get a half note, we're gonna use something to force duration. And this is this tool right here, which looks kind of like a clamp. So we're gonna turn this menu on, and now we're gonna type in A again, and we get a half note. And now, if we were to turn this off, turn on a quarter note, and hit B. We can see that we get the half note plus half note plus quarter note. These two equal the same durations, but they just look different. So hopefully these were helpful for you. Be sure to like the video, you can subscribe to the channel, and of course still become a member and support what we're doing here. Uh, but hopefully all of these Dorico tutorials are helping you out. There's a lot more to come with the next iteration, tutorials number four. I'll see you next time.